Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 2 of our Las Vegas mini-series. These are four distinct videos that bring you guys to the absolute coolest spots near the Las Vegas area and plan your itinerary entirely for you. Last time we went over Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area, which of all the spots we visited on this little trip is easily the closest and most accessible to Las Vegas. In this video I want to discuss Valley of Fire State Park. This is Nevada's oldest and largest state park, and it was an absolute joy to experience after hearing so much about it. Valley of Fire is located 45 miles northeast of Las Vegas off of Interstate 15. It's a perfect stop if you're driving between Las Vegas and Zion National Park, or anywhere in Utah for that matter. One thing I love about these parks near Vegas is how simple they are to navigate. I mentioned in the last episode how Red Rock Canyon consists of a simple one-way scenic road. Valley of Fire is a little different, since like most parks you can backtrack if you need to. Valley of Fire has two entrances, one on the west where we entered and where you'll be entering from if you came from Las Vegas, and also an east entrance where you'll enter if you're coming from Utah or the Lake Mead area. Though we entered and exited through the west entrance, it technically doesn't matter which you choose to enter and exit since this itinerary does span the entire park. All right, that's enough talk, let's get things started. Our first stop was a super short layover before heading on to our first major destination in the park. This is referred to as the Mouse's Tank Road photo location because it's by far the most famous spot for photographers in the entire park. Chances are you've seen one of these shots of the distant zigzaggy roads and that's taken from this exact spot. With my phone and GoPro, which aren't able to zoom super far, this spot was just fine, but let this be a heads up if you're into photography since it took me a little while before figuring out where these iconic shots had always been taken from. Moving on, our first main hike was the Fire Wave Trail. This is an easy 1.5 mile out and back trail that takes you past some huge rock formations and colorful geologic features. About midway through the hike, you'll pass by this large flat rock that has some visually striking stripes and color patterns to them. But believe me, that's just the appetizer to the fire wave, which has some of the coolest natural patterns in any rock formation I've ever seen. I will say the color making up the wave wasn't as standout as I anticipated, but the shape is definitely awesome. Part of it even swirls up like an ice cream cone. The impressive formation outlooks a fire red landscape that I'd heard is sort of Utah-esque, which makes sense given our close proximity. The fire wave is a super simple journey that is certainly worth the payoff. Now, just a mile away at the tail end of Mouse's Tank Road is my personal favorite spot in the park, and that's the White Domes area. Here you can access the White Domes Trail, which is popular for its relatively short but very impressive slot canyon. This is another easy hike, clocking in at 1.1 miles looped. The soft sand making up the trail looks so pristine and perfectly complements the towering rock formations on all sides of you. The color tones here were very impressive, and all over you may notice these small holes or arch formations if you will that have been carved out by wind over time. There are some actual official arches in this park that we check out towards the end of our visit though, so stay tuned for that. Beforehand, we went back in the direction we came from and parked at the Rainbow Vista Trailhead. Though the fire wave and white domes get a lot of buzz in this park, I was really impressed by the Rainbow Vista area. Once again, the trail is a simple 1.1 mile out and back journey that passes in between some towering rock formations. A lot of the hike kind of goes through a canyon of some sorts, and also be sure to keep your eyes out for some more arch formations. No joke, I think my favorite thing about this hike that really left me in awe was the sand color. At the white dome section, the sand was a brighter but still very pristine color. If I put them side by side, you can see how different they look because the sand here truly looked like it was on fire. The dark orange-ish red color blended in perfectly with the rock formations, which was pure eye candy in my opinion. The final view takes place at the Fire Canyon Overlook, which is less of an ultimate view and more of a continuation of the landscape. But it is very cool seeing these giant red rocks that have formed these small mountains that go on for as far as the eye can see. 
Our next destination was a little bit of a detour, but it's something I'd highly recommend, and that's Elephant Rock. This was my favorite arch formation in the park, and it takes less than a half mile to get there from the parking lot. This would be your first stop if you enter the park through the east entrance, as the car park and trailhead are literally the first thing you'll see as you enter. Now, once you get to Elephant Rock, the arch formation looks sort of like a standard arch, but if you rock scramble and get to the other side of it, the name starts to make a lot more sense. Take a good look and tell me what rock formation you've seen looks more like an elephant than this one. If there's one area Valley of Fire absolutely impressed me in, it would be the rock scrambling. Due to the togetherness of the rock formations and mountains here, it is so easy to climb to your heart's content and it isn't inherently dangerous either. One of my favorite spots to do this in was right at Elephant Rock, and if you continue up this hill, you'll get some incredible panoramic views of the desert landscapes before you. Where Elephant Rock is your first destination coming from the east entrance, your closest spots to the west might be Arch Rock and Atlatl Rock. Both of these are situated right by each other in this little section of the park away from everything else. Arch Rock is a very nice formation, but I definitely prefer Elephant Rock and appreciate how there's a little hike to get to that one. There's not a whole lot of anticipation leading up to Arch Rock, as you can see it just off the main road. But nonetheless, it doesn't hurt to stop by, and that also goes for nearby Atlatl Rock. This is the most visited and most accessible petroglyph location at Valley of Fire. The park built this super cool staircase that reaches the petroglyphs, and once you're there, you'll be surprised by how well preserved the drawings are. Even though petroglyphs have never really impressed me, I do think it's cool that you can actually depict some animals and other things that have been carved into the rock. But with that, I now conclude episode 2 of our Little Las Vegas series at Valley of Fire State Park. This place is a great example of the landscapes found in the American Southwest. The colors, shapes, trails, and diversity of things to do made this one of the most unique state parks I've been to and certainly one of my top 10, top 15 favorites. If you're traveling to or live in the Las Vegas area, Valley of Fire is one of those spots I'd absolutely recommend you visit. I appreciate you all watching today's video. Feel free to subscribe to Travel Dash and turn on post notifications so that you don't miss episode 3 or any other videos to come in the future. Thank you all so much and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.